Informal Trilobite 093 tutorial video. I'm Wayne Jackson, maker of Trilobite, and I'm giving the real voice talent around here a break just this once so I can personally show you the features which distinguish Trilobite from all other modular soft synths. I um, need to apologize, it is cold and flu season here on the California coast, and I'm just recovering from being three days under the weather myself, so it's bound to get a little bit scratchy and rough at times. Please try to bear with me, and I promise to edit out the most juicy throat sounds after the fact. In this video, I'll demonstrate the basics of using Trilobite's evolution engine to create brand new derivative patches from a single progenitor, or ancestor patch, whose properties I like. Once we've gone through fitness evaluation of offspring and found a few new patches that we, well, that I like, being the only person here right now, I'll delve into a few more advanced techniques of editing evolved patches to prepare them for live performance and better sonic appeal, rather like tying off the umbilical cord or the barbaric practice of circumcision, if you will. I'll be using the standalone version of Trilobite running on OS X for this demo, but everything I show you is perfectly valid for the Windows and plugin versions as well. Because you've no doubt already watched the first two tutorial videos, I won't describe every action in painstaking detail to keep this video shorter than YouTube's 15-minute limit. Also, just so you know, I'll be reading from a printed script through quite a bit of this video. In fact, I'm reading from one right now. But given the pseudo-random nature of making anything through an evolutionary process, you're likely to hear me extemporize, rhapsodize, and occasionally insert my foot in mouth while we examine new offspring. Recall from our last video that Nainoa created a basic wobble patch from scratch. I've taken the liberty of already loading it, and mapping the patch parameters to my external MIDI control, as demonstrated in the first two tutorial videos. sound a little bit familiar from the last video. I honestly don't know that much about dubstep as a genre, although my teenager still endeavors to educate me now and then. But I do know that I find the wobble bass sound very interesting. This patch alludes to that musically interesting quality, but to my ear it needs more. With that in mind, I could either do a little more research and extend the patch manually, or use Trilobite's evolution engine feature to see what the genetic algorithm gets me. Let's do the latter. To breed new patches, I need to first create an empty population using the Evolver menu. The new population document is opened in a separate floating window. Note that along with the floating population window, a new modular synth panel is also opened. This one with the genetic trace marker in its thumbnail area to indicate that this panel is dedicated to a breeding population window for sound and parameter function. We'll use this panel for testing patch parameters. Before we get started with the breeding process, let me describe the population breeding controls to you as I set some values. The gene count slider allows you to establish the approximate complexity of offspring patches by setting the number of genes, where the evolution engine uses roughly one gene per patch module. Genes will be chained together to create child genotypes, so a genotype is just a bunch of genes strung together. Anyhow, that's for a white paper sometime, not really tutorial material. I digress. Note that the wobble base I know assembled for you is a rather simple patch, so I'll set this value to about 35 to potentially increase the offspring patch complexity. The mutation factor lets you set the probability of copy errors during the genetic crossover operations, or to be more accurate and simultaneously more risque, the sexual reproduction operations of creating child genotypes from parent genotypes. Note that this is the probability of error for every copy operation which occurs, so even small values will result in potentially extensive mutations. I won't go into great detail about the role of mutation and reproduction in general, but just note for now that, as in real life, mutation is usually more often a destructive than a constructive force. I suggest turning this up to appreciable levels only if your population seems to become overly homogeneous. I'll turn it up just a smidgen to let the occasional new module type emerge. The 
The population size slider lets you establish the number of genotypes resulting from a breeding cycle, which will include the fit parents. When I'm breeding my own patches, I like to turn this all the way up to 150, so I'll do that now. This little button with the triangle on it enables the pop-up menu. Not much there yet. Read the manual to find out more. This is the Save Population button. Use it cautiously, since it will overwrite the file from which a population was loaded. You might want to use the pop-up Save As option instead. In either case, these options allow you to save the current state of a population and keep working on it later. This one with the skull and crossbones on it is the Kill button, which will delete any genotypes in the population with no fitness. I'll demonstrate it soon. The big heterosex symbol button is fondly known around here as the fornicate button. At Darwin Arts, this button has all kinds of nicknames, many of which would be unsuitable for a tutorial video. Once you've set your fitness values for your genotypes, press this button to generate a new population from fit parents. I'll demonstrate this momentarily. Lastly, the little question mark button is for context help about trilobite populations. In previous videos, Lonnie and I know I didn't actually push the context help buttons. I'll be more impetuous. Because I slaved away for many weeks writing the online manual and then integrated it into the application, I, of course, do suggest that you use the help buttons whenever you're unsure about a feature of Trilobite. As you can see, all of the user interface features are described in detail with even further links and are the best source of how-to information. We create these tutorial videos to get you jump-started and tempt you into reading the user guide. Read the guide. Really. Okay, having said that, I feel better. Let's get started. To breed babies from the wobble base patch, you need to insert the patch into this empty population. That's easy. Just click on the patch thumbnail on the mod synth panel, drag it to the population, and drop it. A new genotype trace icon appears. Its gray color indicates that it has no fitness yet. What just happened is that the evolution engine translated the patch description into a genotype description. That's an implementation detail you don't really need to know, but I just mentioned it for all you fellow genetic algorithm geeks. Let's give the genotype some fitness so it can be bred. To do this, hold down the control key on your keyboard and drag your mouse over the genotype. Note that the population's mod synth panel begins producing sound. This is known as auditioning the genotype and is where you, most likely a human with highly developed tastes, evaluate the aesthetic fitness of the genotype to breed offspring. To give it some fitness, click the up arrow button on your computer keyboard. Note that the genotype icon gets brighter shades of green as you do this. You can take fitness away by pushing the down arrow key. Since the wobble base is our only parent right now, the fitness doesn't matter as long as it has any fitness at all. As in nature, Fitness is a measure which allows a genotype more or less opportunity to mate than its competitors, which is only applicable if it has any competitors at all. Okay, we're ready to go. Let's fornicate. I mean, not us, but, you know, figuratively. We're now in breeding mode. Really, it's only virtual, but feel free to take pleasure in it if you possibly can. While this is running, note the status text which pops up here in the lower left hand corner. This shows how many prospective children have been tested for human interest value and failed, as well as the number of identical twins which were rejected to maximize diversity. Note all the new genotype icons which pop up. These are what you might call parthenogenic offspring of the wobble patch, it being the only parent. Wow, done already before I had a chance to explain what was going on. You may have noticed that during the breeding cycle, the parameter sliders on the population's mod synth panel were flashing on and off. This happens because the patch renderer underlying the mod synth panel is used to load and test the patch translations of genotypes at a rate much faster than real time. What you saw were UI updates as this happened. We'll run one more breeding cycle before the end of this video so you can get another look. Before we evaluate offspring, let me switch the mod synth panel's thumbnail mode to patch miniatures so you can see the resulting patches themselves. Also, to easily test parameter mappings into patches, I use the same parameter mappings for the population renderer panel that I do for the wobble base patch panel. I can do this quickly by saving the wobble base mappings as the default and then set the population panel mappings from that default. 